Hello, it's Annie from Fresh Flare Furniture Artistry. I'm back with a Fresh Flare application to a sideboard buffet I picked up from a friend of mine. It is very similar in color to one I did previously, this one. Uh, I did a video on it. If you want to check my channel out, you can find it. It was quite a transformation and had beautiful, beautiful maple underneath it. So I was hoping for that on this piece, but it didn't turn out to be quite as cooperative. This piece was made by, built by John since 1891. I thought it said it inviting furniture for rest homes, but I found this label online and actually it is more like inviting furniture for restful homes, which does make a little bit more sense. I started by doing what I usually do, and that's stripping the top, because what I want to find out here is what I have to work with. And I could see that there were a few layers of paint on here, and uh, it came off initially pretty nicely. I put the stripper on, cover it with plastic, let it sit a while. But there were huge, huge gouges and lots of loose veneer on this piece that I couldn't see when it was painted. I just knew that it wasn't in great shape with the paint on top. But I went ahead and stripped it all off and went to look, look at it and realized I'm gonna to have to take the veneer off. Well, it turned out that the veneer was so damaged that I could only uh, get the first layer and the second layer off and so I did that part and I went ahead and began to think well how am I going to get the rest off and I went ahead and got a bunch of towels and soaked them and I laid the towels on top thinking I would soften up this stubborn veneer the two layers that were underneath there and uh, with my little tiny iron which of course that didn't work, um, I would just steam this and it would just peel off, right? That was a, my theory. Well, it didn't work out. We had to actually use a heat gun and together my friend Cliff and I uh, scraped all that old veneer off. What was underneath it were some quite a bit of dense cracks and although the wood kind of looked cool, it had this big seam in the middle and unfortunately, I don't think that it could have been really brought back to life, no matter what I did to it. So I had to think about what I wanted to do. And that's what I kept thinking about for a few days. As I looked over the rest of the piece, I could see that there had been some green paint at one point too. And inside the cabinets, everything was painted, well, not inside the door cavity, but um, it had this paint everywhere. And the quality of the siding of this was not great, but we'd work with what we can. Took the drawers out, started, started looking at those and seeing what needed to happen to fix them, scraped off some of the paint. Uh, with my scraper and just looked everything over. There was a hole in the back of the top drawer, but it, I ended up leaving that. Um, this is the hardware that was on there. It was attached improperly to begin with, but I didn't understand how it worked uh, until after I attached some new hardware, but that hardware did shine up nicely. Uh, but anyway, I didn't use it and that's the way it goes. So here's uh, here's one of the door fronts of the cabinet, and it was really, really warped. So I went in and I, I glued it and made it nice and sturdy, and then I went ahead to take off the paint from both sides of the cabinet doors. And I could start seeing then that there was a pattern underneath there. It wasn't just a regular wood, but the veneer that was put on the front of the drawers and the doors has a, a cooperative pattern in that it matches and 
and supposedly when it was new, it would have looked really nice. But again, some serious gouges, some serious damage and serious warping. So I thought, well, how can I save some of that? And uh, so I kept thinking about it, just like I was thinking about the top. In the meantime, taking the paint off as I could, which is not easy. And this is how it kind of came out in the end. I ended up trying to figure out what colors did I want to paint the parts that needed painting and how I was going to deal with it. So I started out with the the top of it and looking it over and I realized, you know, no matter how much I wanted to save it, I'm not really good at replacing veneer and the cost of doing that would be quite a bit for this piece since it's pretty long. So I went ahead and made the decision that I had to add a texture to the top in order to camouflage all the damage that had occurred to this over the years. So I got out my texture medium and I love this stuff because it, it really dries hard, not chalky at all, and it spreads really nicely. And so I went ahead and just applied it like this and got a nice even coat, as even as I could. So the idea is to try to get uh, the thickness to be the same and I didn't want it to be too thick, but um, I went ahead and did that, and here's what I chose to use. I have these silicone rollers that have different textures on them. Some of them have like a flower texture, and some of them have, I have one that looks like crocodile skin or alligator skin, And but I thought this one might be okay. I'm not sure if it was the best choice, but I knew I didn't think flowers were going to work. So it is what it is, and this is how you do it. You just put a steady pressure on, not too hard, and roll it really slow. This is a little bit speeded up uh, because I figured you probably didn't want to watch me rolling this really slow, but you can see how I kind of wobble. That's the slipperiness of the texture medium because it's just so smooth. I went ahead and finished this and then the job now is to let it dry which can take a day because that's there are different like thicknesses of this no matter how hard you try to make it even. And so here it is all wet right after I rolled it. You can see there's little peaks so once it dries overnight, I uh, came back with my sander and I started sanding all the peaks off of it and making it somewhat smooth to the touch, although the texture was still there. And so this is how that turned out. I ended up putting a coat of gel stain on here to see if I liked that idea. And so here we are. I didn't know what to do with the feet yet. I hadn't really finished the trim. I didn't know what to do with the top, but I did manage to fix the door fronts to make them blend together with some toner. So you didn't get to see all of the stuff that I did to it uh, to get it to this end point, <laughs> but I don't think you would have wanted to because it was really challenging but I did and all of this is like brought together um, just by trial and error adding this color redoing that as you can see I put some peel and stick wallpaper on the inside of the drawers I sanded all the drawers and made them really nice on the inside and the outside and waxed them and then inside the doors here I put a text um, a stencil <laughs> And I changed all the handles up and I put, um, you know, what I could into it that would make it just real usable for another 50 years. The top turned out, I think, pretty good. Uh, it was, I had to do a lot of different colors to get this to get evenish like this. 
but I think it turned out great. It's real hard, real, really um, protected. I think you could put pretty much anything on it except maybe a hot pan, but that's pretty much normal for any piece of furniture. And I painted the sides a, a deep dark bluish gray. And here's how it turned out in some pictures. I wanted to make sure I let you know how thankful I am for those of you who have chosen to subscribe. I don't ask for subscriptions because I do this for pure fun. I don't monetize my channel and that's why I don't have links to the products, but I try to at least show you a picture of what I'm using and I figure most of you can probably figure it out, Amazon or other places. And there are so many great furniture restorers out there to watch. I, I really get a lot out of them myself. I watch them all the time. But anyway, I hope this uh, was of use to somebody. And thank you so much for, for being here. And I hope that I can bring you something of interest again in the near future. Until then, take care.